talking about Hiroshi Fujiwara, we have an update that Hiroshi is designing a pair of Red Wings, and I'm all for it. I love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. He sits down with Hypebeast, got like a nice extensive little interview where he's speaking about it. But again, um, this is a this is a, this is to me an example of the power of influences. And again, um Hiroshi's probably a you know much bigger influence on streetwear than just simply being an influencer, but just for the simple just in terms of, you know, for us to understand what I'm talking about. He is made he's made me want Red Wings when I wasn't even thinking about Red Wings. That's how much of an influence, that's how much of a drawing power he has. So if it's a brand like Red Wings, you know, who are kind of slowly and quietly doing their thing, selling their boots to hardware stores and, you know, builders and people that like to wear Red Wings week in, week out. You know, there's not a time when I've been to Shoreditch walking around and I haven't seen an older gentleman who might be a graphic designer, <laughs> who might be a product designer, industrial designer, a creative director, who's not swirling around in a pair of really stiff indigo denims rolled up and a pair of Red Wings. There's not been a time when I haven't seen it. I've always seen it, especially with a green anorak on top of something, right? From, I don't know, um, you know, whatever, Alabama or something. They're always wearing that, that particular sort of look. So it's a shoe that you're always going to see around, similar to a Wallaby, similar maybe even to a Timberland, a staple in everyone's wardrobe. But to take that um, Red Wing and then to give it a flip and to kind of reintroduce people or make people want the black version is where he kind of separates himself. Because I think the burgundy pair is something that I think most guys should have in their wardrobe. I would assume a pair of Red Wings would be similar to maybe owning a trench coat or a biker jacket or some some sort. I think so. It's a staple in your wardrobe. The black pair, I've not really thought about. But again, the pictures here make me want them. So this is Hiroshi Fujiwara on Fragment Design, title, um, Red Wing and his collaborative design process. Sitting down with Hype Beast. And just look how beautiful that looks. And is that is that clothing collaboration with Red Wings too? Or is that a Carhartt thing? I'm not sure. That looks incredible. Just look how beautiful that looks. Kind of like an off-white oily sole with a black leather upper. And again, this is this is the beauty of being Hiroshi Fujiwara and being able to be untethered. I think most, inf some influence, some influence kids out there, I know sometimes the bag is attractive with some of these um, lesser known brands, but if you're able to, to get the bag, make a product and also secure a deal where you don't sign exclusive um, rights away and you don't have a non-compete clause in your contract, that's amazing. Because then you can go out to other brands and do your thing, right? And not worry that you're going to piss off your other employees. And this is the perfect way to do it, you know? For Hiroshi collaborates um what with himself with nike i think using fragments does he not fragments only with nike he has not adidas has he i've not seen any adidas stuff but loads of other brands he's used especially apparel wise that he's been able to kind of dip in and dip out of which has been quite cool to see and then um here's the bit of the interview to quickly read for you guys uh can you tell me what got you interested in red wing boots again 2019 he also says one of my friends was going to buy a pair so i decided to tag along and pick up a pair as well a man of few words as he is can you tell us a bit of collaboration came to fruition if i remember correctly my friend daisuke gima was the one who connected us when did that happen it began around june this year it is no so he doesn't really talk up too much and it is no red wing had wanted to collaborate with hiroshi because the style uh hiroshi fujiwara wore regularly in the 90s i've got loads of Ibashi magazines here that kind of proved that actually since the 90s became an iconic pair in japan then daisuke gima or jima best known for offering creative direction for brands like sakai stepped in to introduce the two party which is always a good thing about streetwear i think that's part of the reason why some of these collaborations are so um they take so long to happen because sometimes the people in charge, the creative directors, or the ones that are leading the special collaborations or leading the kind of energy marketing stuff at Nike don't necessarily know about certain brands, don't have the relationships that need to kind of foster a good collaboration. So then when sometimes, you know, your friend is involved in streetwear or involved in the scene, finally gets a job at a big place and they bring you in, that collaboration is going to be far better than anything else because there's an actual relationship you guys have. There's a, a rapport, which is why somebody like a Fraser Cook is so vital to like Nike even till now, right? Because he's got such good relationships with loads of people in the creative industry or in fashion or in streetwear that when it's time for him to press a button and get someone a deal, when the deal does happen, you get an amazing product because he's able to kind of connect people at, like, you know, connect the actual decision makers at Nike with the design or actually connect them with a design team to actually make sure he or she's vision has kind of come to fruition. That's what you're seeing with what Hiroshi has done over the years. And that's maybe the power of being able to be out there in a scene as import as great as it is to hang out on the internet and chat shit in people's comments. It is quite cool to actually foster a community, whether it's on basement, whether it's in the streets and stuff, and actually get talking to people and connect and build something. Yeah. Start at night, uh, open up an online radio station, uh, stream your warehouse parties, 
run a couple of t-shirts, uh, print a couple of t-shirts, whatever it may be, design some hats, bum bags, do a little zine, do something so that you can bring a little community around because you never know who those people are going to go on to be. And sometimes, not even about that, just the experience itself is pretty nice, isn't it? Like, I remember doing it for myself when I used to kind of, again, the whole Crooked Tongues thing was a good platform to meet a loads of amazing people. Um, and that kind of led to all these other interesting um, adventures that I kind of went on in my life. And again, doesn't necessarily mean, oh, let me make friends with someone just in case you never know he might be the creative director. I did that. No, just make friends in your scene so that you can be inspired and you can be driven to do cool, interesting things all the way, or, you know, for the rest of your life. Who, who, who wouldn't want to be Hiroshi Fujiwara's age and still making cool products in this scene and living a life that you know we don't really essentially have to grow up you can essentially still go to meetings wearing you know um, amazing denim from Visvim, a pair of red wings the sick Gore-Tex jacket from I don't know whoever it may be and just strut in and still seal deals that's amazing uh, the interview and again you got Hiroshi inspecting the shoes you know making sure everything's right that just looks so they look so beautiful against the, the tensions in the detail I'm pretty sure like the, the beauty of some of Hiroshi Fujiwara's collaborations is that most of the time they look quite, you know, plain on first sighting. But then when you think about it, he's doing what every quintessential streetwear brand has kind of based its foundation on. If you read the story of Supreme, you would have known that James Jebby has said that when he went into a skate store once, he hated the merchandising of a skate store. It was really crappy and frumpy. He hated the clothing that they made, really poor quality. So he wanted to elevate this scene that he thought was amazing. He loved the personalities around it. You know the vigor that people went with went towards the skate skateboarding and just the culture around skateboarding but he just wanted to up level up the clothing to match whatever he saw on the streets and that's why he created supreme so once you see um first Fujiwara's level of collaboration the same sort of thing i take a shoe that i already like but i can't find a particular colorway um out in the market and i edit it that way so essentially you probably couldn't find a black uh, red wing in that particular hue with the with the particular color eyelets with that particular stitching on the midsole with that particular finish maybe on the toe box uh, with that particular finish maybe on the mids on this on the outsole itself maybe a different kind of insole and those little details are what makes the collaboration that much special because you're not going to see and the thing i like about it, you won't necessarily see this colorway or that design again in the general lineup of what the red wings put out it'll be a one and done thing and if you don't get it at the time it's kind of over which is cool to see as well because you know nowadays with StockX, you know nothing is ever sold out really i've heard that in this interview can that continues i've heard that the collaboration model was inspired by your original customized pair with the vibrant soul swapped with a white soul was this the concept came up no he said actually that wasn't an idea i came up with by myself it was more of an idea that came up through the dis discussion i had with people at red wings in and jima we were talking about what we could possibly do we came up with this idea and started moving forward which is cool right because i remember that was a big part of the super future forums back in the day when people would get shoes especially boots and swap out the soles. Sometimes even Dr. Martins, they'll get a Dr. Martins and maybe um, get a, a really chunky platform sole, similar to what you might find in maybe a Rick Owens boot, uh, maybe a crepe sole in some regards. You know, Maybe it's not the best thing for winter because it's a bit slippery, but different kind of soles on different boots to kind of elevate the boot a little bit. And um, I think some brands were probably looking at those threads and probably taking those ideas and stealing them. And some brands were able to take those ideas and just co-opt them into a collection. But it, that was a good basis to kind of see that, you know, you are really about this life because that's how you essentially you get hooked into buying, you know, denim from Japan because you want a particular cut, you want a particular finish, you can't find it anywhere else. You, ha you hit up a proxy somewhere and you pay over the nose for a particular cut of jeans that you're going to wear every single day. This is this is the lifestyle we live. And the interview continues. How many Red Wing boots do you own? It says three or four probably. Do you still have uh, customized boots that became inspiration and collaboration? I should be able to find them somewhere. I'll look for them hard enough. But yeah, the boots are pretty cool. Three different models it looks like, right? Um, of boot here. They look fucking beautiful. Red Wing and Fragment embossed on the side. Really, really nice and well done. I can't wait to see um, when they're going to be... Uh, available and how much they will be themselves so yeah definitely check out the interview um there's some clothing as well here is that collaboration with who's that is it john smedley the people that make knits right he's always got really cool ideas for collaborations where everything's really done like again look at the packaging of that it's a kind of ziplock bag fragment logo on the front like some nice staples that you could wear with the trousers i mean with the boots just very very classily done man just and again just the 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 the, the, the simplicity and this you know it reminds me a lot of this is kind of of um, the stuff that Jound is doing with APC. Just really simple basics. You know, he's kind of up, he's kind of leveled them up a little bit, added his little magic touch onto them, and this is what you get. So, yeah, one in a million dude, Hiroshi Fujiwara, again, one of my idols in the scene, somebody I've always looked up to. 
And again, I recommend you check out this collaboration. It's going to be out very, very soon, I guess. 